take this one. That one. No more. This. Oh, really? This one's for me. Oh, oh, more. Isn't that stunning? I'd rather have mink. You would? Mink is so every day. I don't care. We're wishing for what we want, aren't we? Yeah. Well, I want mink. All right. Have me. I want some jello. What do you spend on lunches? Depends. Can't you give me an average? Sixty-five cents. Four, two, sixty-five. Sixty-five times six, that's three nine per week. How about car fare? Thirty cents a day. Thirty cents a day. Well, if you don't spend more than a quarter a day for lunch, and if you don't wear stockings, if you don't go to the movies, unless somebody takes you, you can go to school. Oh, yes. And you can't buy any more magazines. Gee, maybe it isn't worth it. Maybe you want to spend the rest of your life as a car hop, huh? Oh, don't be a stoop. Ooh, my feet are just killing me. Everything swells up in the heat. It isn't the heat. It's the it's humidity. It's the humidity, yeah. Let's turn to wash. Yours, I dry. Oh, no. Well, I got started. No, I just meant, why couldn't you help me get a modeling job now? I've told you ten times. I don't want to use my influence till you're ready. And you won't be ready till you go to school. According to this, I won't need your old influence. Oh. Dorothy Dale places all her graduates in the finest positions. Mm, she looks like a pretty nifty number. I bet this was retouched. You know, you're not going just to get a better job. A charm school's like college, finishing school combined. I can read, Maxine. Well, all I can say is, without a social education, you're never going to meet a real man. And what's the matter with George? Oh, he'll never be able to buy a mink coat. Girls, Dorothy Dale asks, what is your most important asset? Answer, your smile. Be charming. Mm -hmm. Be charming, that's what I told you. Oh, I'd love to go back to Denver with a mink coat someday, Maxine. Mm -hmm. Two mink coats. One for my mother. I guess it won't kill me to have 25 cent lunches. No, it's too hot to wear stockings anyway. How long a course should I take, Maxine? Six weeks. Gee. Wouldn't it be wonderful if, if after I graduate, I start working in the model, in modeling in a store like you for a few weeks, and, and then one day, in walks a handsome young millionaire. Yeah, wouldn't it be wonderful? And, and he's standing at the perfume counter, and, and then suddenly he turns around and sees me. And we don't say a word for a long time, and, and then he says... Will you start drying the dishes? Okay, but... It could happen. Mm -hmm. Dorothy Dale says, a charm school girl's future is unlimited. Once she leaves our doors, she is ready to meet anyone socially and ready to hit her jackpot. Okay. Good evening, Miss Chambers. Good evening, Miss Blaine. Good evening, Miss Chambers. Oh, Miss Ames. About your tuition. You know, each week must be paid in advance. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Chambers. Dorothy Dale School of Charm. Oh, yes, we'd be glad to recommend a model. All of our models are highly qualified. Yes, Mr. Lawrence, she'll be there at nine. Thank you. Look, could I give you five now and, and the other five when I come Thursday? Thursday? Thursday. Certainly. Miss Maud Ames. Five dollars. Oh, would you mind making that Leonora Ames? I've changed it. Not at all. Leonora. Leonora, that's charming. Thank you. Thank you. It was a lovely luncheon, Mrs. Burton. 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 Thank you so much for having me. Pick up your bag. Sorry. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Bravo. 
That was quite nice. Cross your legs, my dear. Now, may we have Miss Ames? Yes, Miss Taylor. More confidence, my dear. Speak out, full tones. What is your favorite fur? Mink. Mink. Mine, too. Well, believe it or not, this is a beautiful mink coat. Fourth floor, cosmetics, jewelry, human furs. Oh, miss, just a minute. Only $49.95 plus tax. $5,000, that's not too bad. Do you like the full bag? Oh, I adore it. Skin to the bar. Simply healthy. Wally signed his contract with Metro yet? No, not yet. Come along, darling. Better have the old one glazed. Mm -hmm. You're right. I'd rather make him buy me a new bracelet anyway. <laughs> of course you would, darling. Like it, darling? Oh, I hope you're not offended because I call everyone, darling. What a charming coat. Uh, may I see the lining? Only $49.95. Plus tax. Plus tax. Uh, charming, darling. Charming. I uh, think we haven't been working here long yet. Yes. Hold this a moment, will you, darling? I'm giving a party, a lovely party this weekend on a yacht. Uh, we go to Catalina. No, thank you. There'll be lots of people, darling. Fresh air, sunshine, and if you don't like it, you can leave. No, thanks. Now, don't be a silly bourgeois, darling. You have work to do, I have work to do. Now, we can chat here for hours, but uh, we would still get to the same point, wouldn't we? The yacht belongs to my business associate. Charming. We leave from my place at uh, 6.30 on Friday. Uh, it'll be divine, darling. Nice relaxation. Tout à l'heure. Did you get an invitation? I'm not going. You're out of your head. 99.95. Handmade from Sorry, the... just looking. No. Don't you know who the party's for? Smith Ulrich, whoever that is. Only the wall in Wall Street, dearie. The little poodle works for him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 99.95. Handmade from the... Sure. Parties are supposed to be terrific. They'll have to do without me. Who are you? Only $49.95 plus tax. I'm not going, Maxie. How else do you think girls like us get to meet guys like Oleg? It's just no use, Maxine. I, I just I just look terrible. I, I'm not going. No, I'm not the type for this dress, and I'm I'll her. And I'm, I'm not the type for the yachting party, either. How do you know? You've never been on one. That's the only reason I wanted to go, was just to find out what it would be like. But not with those characters. Any man that goes to a party like that has just one idea. And that's one idea too many for me. You can take care of yourself. I don't want to go to a party where I have to worry about taking care of myself. Unzip me, please. Well, it's up to you. But the party's an investment, Mom. Oh, I know, I know. I should think of security. That's right. Hi. Who is it? Velma. Velma, see? And what is security? Money. Period. Exclamation point. Hello. Hi. I'm here at the fur girls, and I'm sorry I'm late, but I had to wear all Oh, thanks, but maybe you ought to go home. Oh, well. I brought some gloves in case you needed them. Thanks. They're stunning, Velma. Thanks a lot. Well, well I really don't have to go yet. What's Please, the matter with Velma? It? I'll talk to you tomorrow. Can I see how oh, I should go open on. my own room? Go on. Yeah. Well, have a good time anyway, yeah. honey. Yeah. And spill some champagne yeah. on it. Goodbye. Hey, Thanks if you have a friend, don't forget about me. I look terrible in that, too. Wait till I finish pressing your coat. Well, you can put this around your yeah. shoulders and it will Please look just Please don't fun. get mad, but it's... It's just that, well, I, I resent the whole setup. Resent it? Yes, right from the beginning when that, that slimy little man crawled up to me in the store and, and wiggled his eyebrows. It, it just makes me feel cheap. Let's face it. Girls like us can't pick the way we meet men like... men like Smith Ulrich. Why, well, you should be grateful. Well, I'm not. Oh, no. You want to keep dreaming about little old Prince Charming on a golden horse. You feel cheap. Well, that's touching. Now, let me tell you. I'd be very glad, believe me, to be in your shoes. For Pete's sake. Here you are with a chance to meet some 
decent men. Men who could take you out of living in a dump like this. You. Oh, you don't know a break when you get it. Are you from the Ulrich Yard? That's right. Oh, thank goodness. I, I thought they'd never send somebody to pick me up. They didn't send me. Oh. I have some business to take care of. Well, couldn't you take me to the yacht first? Don't say yacht. Say boat. Boat, then. Couldn't you please? It's not a very good party. In fact, it's one of the dullest they've had. Oh, oh I don't care. I, I've got to get there. Why? Well, because, well, I don't think that's any of your concern. Well, if you're in such a hurry, why didn't you come with the others? Well, I, I couldn't get off work in time. I'm a model. I phoned Mr. Cortez before he arrived, but he said he'd send a taxi out and then somebody would pick me up. If you want to wait till I finish my business, I'll take you out. You couldn't take me now? No. Well, I guess I'll just have to wait till you're ready then. Come on. Where? And drive to the office with me. Oh, oh, I couldn't do that. Why not? Well, in the first place, I don't know who you are, except that you say you're from the old rig yacht. And in the second place, I owe that taxi driver $6.50, which Mr. Corton... I'll take said... care of him. My name's Leonora Ames. What's yours? Smith Ulrich. <laughs> Sorry to be so long, but I'm trying to set up a new organization here. Oh, that's perfectly all right. I was having a delightful cat. There's so many people on the boat. Uh, do you mind if we drive back to town? Oh, not at all, Mr. O'Reilly. I'd love to. Oh, well, that's fine. what's so funny about learning how to walk with a book on your head. I'm sorry. What did you say the name of that place was? Dorothy Dale School of Charm. It's quite famous. It is. I wish you wouldn't drive so fast. I like it. And I'm a good driver. I'm sure you are, but... Didn't your charm school teach you to be agreeable to your escort? Yes. What else did they teach you? Oh, diction and makeup and fencing. Mr. Deval taught that. And posture and social usage. Social what? Usage, you know. Conversation, etiquette, how to pour tea, how to listen to music, how to... Please watch the road. Mm-hmm. Where are you from? Denver. Family poor? Yes. How long have you been in Los Angeles? Almost five years. Doing what? Working, Who modeling. Paid? Who paid for your charm school? I did. How many weekend yachting trips have you been on? None. All right, how many Hollywood parties then? None. Come on. I haven't. Why not? Nobody else asked me. There's some cigarettes in the glove compartment. Light one for me. What do you know about me? Oh, uh, I know you're from the East. New York. And I know you're sort of a, of an international something. Well, that just about describes it. What else? And you're rich. How rich? Oh, very rich. What else? Well, I know that you've never been married before. And I'm not going to be either.
Where are we? At the house. My house. No. Come in and have a drink. Don't be a silly girl. You knew you weren't just taking a drive. Please take me home, Mr. Ulrich. Come on, don't you think I like you? Take me home. Didn't the charm school tell you how to handle this? I'm sorry. I just want to go home. Skip it. I took her home and we said good night. That happened three or four more times and then I dropped her. Why? They come a dime a dozen. Well, I thought from what you said before that she was sweeter than most of the girls. Psychoanalysts and elephants. I never forget. Oh, I think this is all pointless anyway. Well, why did you come here? Because I don't like getting upset so easily and you're supposed to be able to calm me. I can if you'll work with me, not against me. Let's go back to the girl. Well, for your information, she's after precisely the same thing everyone's after, my money. Well, maybe the girl feels that you just want to play around with her. Well, she's right if she does. You don't think I want to marry her, do you? I certainly hope not. If I persisted long enough, I could get where I want. I wish business were as easy. Yesterday, I had to battle with some grubby little man from noon until 2 o'clock in the morning. And I had one of those idiotic attacks. A heart attack? Yes, and I go to a specialist for that. I think they're just a nervous reaction. Well, a year ago, you wanted to buy out a, a rubber company. And the owner didn't want to sell. Oh, so you had an attack. The next one occurred, and that's South American I episode. Get it. I get the connection. Remember, I can't get what I want, I have an attack. Is that your theory? Yes. There's nothing organically wrong with your heart. So why the attacks? Well, let's consider whether it's just a way of saying I'm not all powerful. I'm weak. Take pity. Give me what I want. I have these attacks because I have a bad heart. But that's too simple for you. You have to find some insane Freudian reason. Heart attacks because I want pity. What are some of your other little gems? I must destroy everyone I can't own. I'm afraid all anyone wants is my money. Well, I'll never marry because I'd only be married for my money. I didn't. Don't say you didn't say that because you did. Admit it. I only said that. Well, you're you wrong, should... Doctor. Dead wrong. I am going to get married. I'm not afraid of anyone. And what's more, you want to know something? I'm going to marry that girl. You don't believe me, do you? Hello, Franzi. We're taking a plane to Yuma as soon as you can get hold of uh, Leonora. Uh, what's her name? Uh, yes, Ames. Why do you think? I'm going to get married. Sorry to cut off a major source of your income, Doctor, but you won't see me again. It's up to you. Completely. And I do as I please. Yes. That's why you made your call. I said I didn't think you'd marry, and so you've made arrangements to prove I'm wrong. You don't really want to marry this girl. You've only done this because you're angry at me and to prove that no one has authority over you. A marriage like this will only ruin the girl and you. That's your opinion. <laughs> Pardon, madame. Luncheon is ready. Oh, thank you. But you mean he actually doesn't get home until midnight? Sometimes even later. What do you do? Wait up and polish your jewelry? Thank you. 
They look so good, I'll take two. Well, I usually pick him up at whatever warehouse or, or office he's at. Yes, we, no, warehouse, uh-huh. What then? Oh, then we drive to the beach or, or some little joint. Money and romance, lucky girl. Yes, except that Franz here, one of the other men, is always alone. Sounds cozy. Well, this is very. All together, we're a very cozy couple. What's the matter, mm hon? -hmm. Oh, I just think that Smith wishes that he hadn't married me. Well, the minute you get rich, you get neurotic. No, and I mean it. I don't blame him. I don't know how to fit into all of this or, or how to behave. Enjoy it. That's how. And I'm sure he thinks that I married him for his money. No comment. You know I just... I could never do a thing like that. You really love them, don't you? Yes. Can I have the butter, please? Now, look. So everything isn't feeling and cooing. So you didn't have a honeymoon. So you don't see him when alone. you get married, you So you think this and he thinks that. Who cares? Look at that house. Look at the Georgia cow. Look at us. Watch by the swimming pool. And look at this silver. And this glass. Look at this table. Oh, honey, you're rich. We are rich, but... Things will be better in New York. The house is on Long Island. Same difference. Just this one, darling. It's so lovely. I wish I could go to bed. So do I. It's almost three o'clock, friends. Tough. Take a pill. I've lived on pills ever since I came east. That's ten months. I won't anymore. Then play with the necklace he gave you for your anniversary. Yes. Instead of that honeymoon trip we'll never take. Instead of going to Denver to see my family. Instead of having dinner together and spending time together and being together like other married people. wants me to do is sit here and wait till he phones or comes home. When I see him exactly for one hour, two if I'm lucky. Tough. You got what you wanted, darling. You're wearing it. You mustn't expect him to pick up your handkerchief, too. Maybe money's enough for you, but... Of course, isn't it for you? No. Why else marry a madman like that? But he wasn't like this before we were married. He was a bachelor. He was a human being. Tough. Buy yourself a new hat. Tough, darling. Tough. Will you stop saying that? Will you stop playing that piano? Will you stop? You know, you're a greedy little girl, darling. And you're getting greedier every day. This part is divine. Greedy? How dare you? I remember hearing it in a Viennese cafe. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I'm, I'm it's sorry. All right. It saves him from getting hit. That's what I get paid for. Stop playing. Will you stop playing? Yes. Get ready. Report for duty. Come on, Francis. Yes, I, I think I. Here it is, darling. I'm sorry, Francis. Oh, that's all right. Come right in, boys. Strap your coats any place. Good morning, Miss Olick. Good morning. Good morning, Leonora. Tired? You look done in. You know where the projection room is. Sure, Mr. Olick. We'll start right away. Got some movies of my new project. Make yourselves comfortable, boys. The picture will be on in a minute.
Help yourselves to a drink. You got any food? Well, there's some sandwiches. Nothing hot? Yeah. Oh, sorry, sir. It's all right. Anybody that wants anything to eat, just ask Mrs. Aldrich. Where do you think you're going? I thought you'd be alone. There's so many men. Well, I think I'll go to bed. You're my wife. And as my wife, you're the hostess in this house. Wait till the next shot, the one after this. Is this the one, Smith, where you had the men working away? <laughs> Lights. Turn on the lights. <laughs> Tell them to hold the screen. We're not through yet. What was so funny, Leonora? Nothing. Well, I'm glad you can get a laugh out of me. I'd just like to know what it was. I wasn't laughing at you, Smith. There wasn't anything in the picture. What was so funny, then? I'm sorry. I'm afraid it was something I said. Something about me? No. Something private, then. Perhaps if you watched the picture, Leonore, you wouldn't be so bored. I'm not bored, Smith. Thanks to Mr. Gentry. Ulrich, please. Good night, Gentry. Now, look, Ulrich, I think you're making a mouthful. I'm no longer interested in what you think. Good night. Start the picture. Harry. I can see now why they install love seats in movie balconies, Leonora. But please try to remember you're not sitting there anymore. Leonora, don't leave this room. Get out. Get out. Oh, good. all of you. Of course. Tell my wife to come down. Darling, watch out. You might get slapped this time. you turn around. You know I'm here. Look at me. Look at what you bought. Don't scream. Please. Shall I call your friends back so you can insult me again in front of an audience? You merely got what you deserved. I wasn't doing a thing and you know it. You look ridiculous. Yes, I am ridiculous. You made me ridiculous. I don't think you meant to. I just think the moment you married me, you were sorry. You don't want me, not really. You just want me to want you. My, aren't we sorry for ourselves? Do you want a divorce? Oh, I get it. It's all clear to me now. You think you've been married long enough to deserve a big settlement. No, I don't want a divorce, but you do. I don't. I want you. Your trouble is you want too much. If you wanted to marry rich, you did. I loved you. That's just the sort of thing you tell yourself. Don't waste it on me. I thought you loved me. I thought we could be happy. You thought if you had enough money, you'd have everything. Well, it's not that easy. The world is clammy with people who think that way, and they sicken me. I was born rich. My father left me four million dollars. But I didn't drink it away. I didn't gamble it away. I didn't marry it away. I knew what to do with it. I've got exactly 22 and a half times that much now, and I'll have 50 times that much before I die. That's what everyone wants, isn't it? Well, I've got it. And I made it myself. Every one of my corporations, every single one, has a different staff, a different lawyer, a different accountant. Not one of them knows anything about each other. 
I run it all. Each one has his place and he stays there. And why not? They're well paid. And that's what you've got to learn, Leonora. You're better paid than any of them. And you've got your place, this house. And that's where you'll stay. But you want more, don't you? Yes. I want more of you. Are you bored? Do you tire of money so easily that you're bored? Oh, Smith, I just meant that I can't. I Go I... away, then. Take a trip. Go to Palm Beach, Sun Valley. Go anywhere. You're rich. You should anyway. There's still some of that charm school paint sticking to you that needs scraping off. Well, I guess that's all there is to do. Go away, I mean. Do you think I should? By all means. Okay, I will. Not to Palm Beach and not to Sun Valley. I'm going to get a job. How long will you be waiting table or sweating in the factory, Mrs. Ulrich? That depends on you. Oh, I see. A cold, tyrannical husband is supposed to miss his loving little wife and beg her to come back to their million-dollar cottage. Well, I'm afraid you picked the wrong husband, Leonora. You've had more than a year of being rich. You like it. I can't live like this, Smith. I can't. You'll be back. You please be quiet. Are you waiting to be examined? No, to apply for the job. Oh, thank heavens. We'll be back to the scene in a minute. He's busy right now. And Kevin, please stop that whistling. Shh, shh. I hope you're looking for work and not for a husband. Oh, work, believe me. That's what our last receptionist said when we had the fire the other day. Miss Murray? Uh, yes, doctor. Kevin, please be quiet. Emergency call. Oh, help Miss Dubrow, will you, Miss yes, Murray? Oh, what a world. Uh, Mrs. Dubrow? Mrs. Dubrow, I'm Mrs. Dubrow. Will you step into the doctor's office? I was on time. Oh, yes, I know you were, but he's been called out on an emergency, but he'll be right back, right back, and I'll go and sit the doctor to see you now, my dear. Doctor! Dr. Quinana! Kevin, please stop that! Kevin. Will you see Miss... Uh, Miss, what is your name? Ames. Uh, Miss Ames. About that job. Do it again. Okay, you do it with me this time. Here is the church. Here is the steeple. Open the door. No, open the door like this. That's right. Wait just a minute and see all the people. That's right. That's good. Would you come in, Jim? You get down, Kevin. Kevin, if you don't be quiet, I'll break your neck. You have a knack with kids. I like it. Come pretty tough down here. 
They did where I came from, too. You weren't born under the elevators. Neither were you. No, a little closer to Park Avenue, but I could hear it. You know what the job is, Miss Ames? Receptionist. Yes, for Dr. Hoffman and me. He's an obstetrician. I'm a pediatrician. He brings children into the world. I try to keep them here. I'm sure you succeed, Doctor. Well, I don't always. It's easier to write prescriptions than to pay for them. What experience you had? Well, I was trained to be a receptionist. Where? In Los Angeles. The Dale School. Dale School, huh? You worked in New York? No. I see. How long have you been here? Less than a year. Well, that's a long time. What have you been doing? Well, I've been living on Long Island. Oh. Yes, but I've got to make some money now, Doctor. Give me a cup somewhere. Oh, that's, that's all right. I've had my breakfast. Where? Where? Yep. Uh, in the automat. <laughs> I'll lose that one. I would have bet you'd never been in an automat. Oh, I was. Now, look, Miss Ames, this job only pays 25 a week. That's all right. Well, the work isn't tough, but the hours are long. I don't mind. I've seen you somewhere. You haven't been in the hospital recently. No. You obviously don't live down here. No. Do I look familiar? No. Oh, I must be wrong. Look, you've got a little smudge on your cheek right here. Oh, oh that's a beauty mark over a mole. Well, why cover it up? There's nothing wrong with a mole. Miss Ames, can you type and take dictation? Yes, I can type. Some. I could brush up on it. Where? Well, I could go to night school and study shorthand, too. I'm 25 a week. Well, thank you very much for coming in, Miss Dr. Uh, Granada, I need the job. So do many people. Please, Dr. Granada, I've been job hunting for two weeks. I haven't got $25 to my name. Forgive me, you don't look it. But it's true. Honestly, the work isn't very hard. You said yourself it wasn't, and I can answer telephones and keep records. And type. I'll practice. And take dictation. Well, if you didn't speak too quickly, I could take it down in longhand. I write very fast, and I'm good with children. Yes, you are, and that's important. And for 25 a week, well, I'm sure it's hard to get somebody who's really perfect. Well, I'll give you a try. Oh, thank you. Well, could you start now, or would you like to look around and come in tomorrow, sir? Well, I might as well. Start, I mean. Okay. If that's all right with you. Sure, that's fine. I'll get Miss Murray to show I'll you around. I'll wait for her out there. All right. Thank you very much. Goodbye. I mean, uh... Good afternoon, Dr. Quinnard and Dr. Hoffman's office. Yes. yes. Oh, hello, Dr. Hoffman. You call, please? Me? Yes, there was one from, uh, Mrs. Palmer called. And Mrs. Bernstein's in your office with Miss Murray. Oh, thanks. Uh, say, Lee, would you mind calling her Bernstein? She says she never knows who you're talking about. Oh, I'm sorry, Doctor. <laughs> it's no tragedy. These days, nobody knows what anybody else is talking about anyway. <laughs> what a world. Well, well Mrs. Bernstein, you think you're looking fine today? Hello? You were yes. in about her stomach, and this about this other nonsense. The child yes, be great. Right, now, you take it home. I don't want to hear any more yes, about doctor, it. Doctor, I will. Goodbye. Come on, Mrs. Rebecca, don't forget to be back here at 7.30 with your husband. Yes, doctor, I will. Some doctor he is. He's a very good doctor. I think you'd better come in, Miss Ames. Yes, sir. Do you often chat with Mrs. Rudecki and the other mothers? No, not often. Did you suggest to Mrs. Rudecki that she give Lorraine elocution lessons? Yes. Why? Well, Mr. Rudecki has a thick foreign accent, and Mrs. Rudecki's afraid that... Yes, Lorraine... I know all about that, but wasn't there some other reason, something about if Lorraine learned to speak well and walk well and do half a dozen other things well, she'd end up by marrying well, and that that's the most important thing in a girl's life? Isn't that what you said? Yes, I said that. Now, look. Your beliefs are your own business until you start pumping them into my patients. Then they become my business. But you get these ideas anyway. Is it your burning ambition to marry a rich? Well, is it? Is that... is that all, all no. Doctor? Do you want this job permanently? Yes. And will you act as there's a temporary stopgap for you? Your typing, your filing, all your desk work haven't improved one iota in the two weeks you've been here. I'm sorry. Well, why don't you do something about it? I don't want to irritate you by bringing up your personal standards again. 
But you're letting them slop over into your work, Leonora. You're a receptionist in a doctor's office on the east side, not a hostess on Park Avenue, where you treat your patients, the way you... For Pete's sake, look at that hairdo. You're so fancy, you're scaring people away. They may be poor, but they're patients, and we want them. Well, you can keep them. If everything I do is wrong, I might as well quit. Stupid. What? She's a stupid girl. Who? I criticized her work, so she got mad and quit. Didn't she? Well, her work was bad. Was it? Well, she isn't really stupid. She could be quite good if she wanted to be. Well, put the ad in the paper again. Unless you want to ask her to come back. I didn't fire her. She quit. I don't know what's the matter with that girl. You don't suppose there's anything the matter with you? Yes, who is this? Just a minute. May I come in? Sit down. How did, how did you know I was here? I had you watched from the day you left. I knew I wouldn't hear from you. I wanted to be sure you were all right. It's not a very nice way, but it's the only way I knew. I guess everything turned out as you predicted, Leonora. Can you hear me? Yes. I've missed you more than I thought I could miss anyone. Thanks. I've come running after you. I beg you to come back to me. How's Dr. Uh, what's his name, Quinata? All right. Works you pretty hard, doesn't he? Not as hard as he works himself. Where does this go? Any place. It's too bad he isn't more successful then. He isn't just interested in success. I'm sorry. That wasn't fair. Truth is, I'm a little jealous of him. You don't have any reason to be, as much as I wish you did. Why? Because I'm glad to see you and. I wish I weren't. What are you looking for? A cigarette. I have one here. Leonora. It's no good, Smith. I won't go back to the way it was. I don't want you to. I was wrong, I admit it. It no. won't be that way anymore, Please, Leonora. Smith, no. It won't. We'll make a fresh start. We'll make everything just the way it ought to have been. I'm so used to having my own way that it was hard for me to come here. But I missed you, and I wanted you so much. I missed all the things we ought to have done, like being together, finding new places, having a honeymoon. Let's go on one tomorrow, Leanna. Let's start over again. I can't see you living in this dirty little room. It's not dirty, Smith. It's shabby. It's awful. Racket. Let's get out of here, Leonor. Well, I don't mean anything. We'll just take a drive or have a cup of coffee. I don't care. I, I just can't talk in this room. I'll bring you back the moment you ask me. Is that a promise? Yes. Turn out the light. Here? No, the other side. You really don't like living here. No one's poor by choice. It really isn't such a bad room. Not if you haven't seen better.
darling. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. May I relieve you of this oh, burden? Oh, I would oh, like to serve Greg as my safe today. Oh, just today. I have a special reason. You can trust me. I've done this before. Please. I just want to... Oh, no. be hungry, so I brought you a lovely breakfast. Three eggs, darling. I don't want to get up here. But you must. Smith told me to wake you. He did? Yes. We leave in an hour. Who's we? All of us, darling. Smith, Tim, Charlie, me, the whole crowd. Where are we going? On a great tour of every Oric crowd in the country. Publicity tour. It'll be a lovely vacation, and I certainly need one. Frenzy. When did Smith decide to make this trip? Day before yesterday. You got back just in time. I always said to her, smart and girl, this, this, this is a lovely suit to travel. Just take this in your name. Where's the name? Then you can buy your table. We can walk over to the suit. I'm through with that coat. What? I'm through with that coat. Darling, this is an expensive thing. You can't afford, I mean. I can. Dr. Quinata's office? Miss Murray, this is Leonora Ames. I'll wait. Don't be stupid, Leonora. Take this away, please. Look, I told you all this once before. Take darling, it be a darling. All right, all right. Some darlings never know when they are well off. No, but give them time, Franzi, and they'll find out. Dr. Quinata, I'm very sorry about yesterday, and I was wondering... Yes, I'd like to come back very much. Yes, I'll be there as soon as I can. Paul, oh, come on, Lee, go home, beat it. Uh, here for tomorrow morning. I want to finish sending these out, the monthly bills. Oh, why bother? Nobody ever pays the doctor anyway. <laughs> Has Cunada left? Uh-uh, he hasn't come back from the clinic yet. Well, if he doesn't show by nine, you know how to lock up. Sure, good night. Good night, please. Uh, don't wait later than 9.30 anyway. <laughs> Dr. Quinata's office. No, not yet, Mrs. Rudecki. Yes, I did tell him, but... Yes, I'll tell him again, Mrs. Rudecki. Yes. Hello. Hi. Tired? Beat. Is this becoming a habit, staying over time? Coffee will be ready in a minute. Take your coat off. Mrs. Rudecki phoned again for you to come over. I told her this morning there was no sense in my coming over. Well, this is the tenth time she's called, which is a new record for her. You know what I'd like to do to Lorraine next time she comes into this office? Cut off those awful curls. And you know how she could cure that stomach trouble of hers? By sending her mother to a good psychiatrist. Any temperature? No. She says it's normal, but she claims Lorraine's seeing double. Seeing double? Yes. Miss mother has gone, hasn't she? Yes. Leave. Grab a taxi and get over to the city drugstore. Okay. You know where it is? Yeah, I'll find it. You have some money, haven't you? <laughs> sure. Have this filled and looking over the Rudecky's right away. Okay. And hurry. Yeah.
light's a little bright for her eyes. Find something to shade it with. I'm afraid it's botulism. Botulism? Yeah, that's a doctor's fancy word for a very bad kind of food poisoning. Oh, trucisma. Tapotrava. Yes, tell not trucisme. But pravice, pravda? Mama means, will she get all right? I don't know. I think so, but I don't know for sure. You're so busy telling me I'm why she's sick that you haven't got time to come and see for yourself. Please keep oh, quiet. Please. Please. That canned meat that she had this morning must have been the cause of the trouble. Anyone else eat it? Tilly? No. Is there any left? The kitchen window. You opened it, you fool. You were not supposed to open it. Oh, what is the I'm moving on. Oh, I'm moving I'll give her another injection every six hours until it takes effect. If it takes effect. It will. Even when you treat cases like this immediately, 18% of those treated die. I know all the statistics. I'm a very good textbook doctor. What's the matter, Quinata? I slipped up. Just because Lorraine's always had stomach trouble, I assumed that's what it was this time. A doctor has no right to assume. Anyone can make a mistake. Not when it comes to a kid's life. I should have come straight over this morning instead of being such a... What are you doing? Well, you... You were shouting a little. I didn't want the detectives to hear you. It's a good idea. You know, you might just as well go home. It's after one o'clock. No, no, I'll stay. Be back here at about noon. Give her another injection. Yes, right? Thank doctor. you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Sleeping? Uh uh, not a bit. I'm used to staying up all night. You wait till about nine o'clock. That's when he catches up on you. Aren't you cold? No. Why'd you wear that ridiculous coat? Haven't you got a warm one? I thought it was going to rain yesterday. You must be freezing. How much would it cost to buy you a warm coat? Oh, no, please. Now, look, Rudecky's just paid me for the last two months. I don't need an overcoat. I got one. It's very nice of you, but... All right. You go home and get some sleep. I'm going home to take a bath, but I'm coming back to work. What do you think I am, a Park Avenue hostess? No, not a bit. It's really too early, to be sure. I know. Are you worried? <laughs> That's a silly question. How long will a lab report take? Well, if you went over there now, yourself, we would probably let you know the first thing tomorrow morning. Can I just go? I'll call and tell them you're coming, if you like. Please. I... You won't say anything. To Quinana? 
Yes. No. It's none of my business, Lee, but don't you think that you should? I... I couldn't. She's really a marvelous fella. I know, but... It's too much of a mess. Okay. Anyway, thanks. I must say, you don't look it. Look what? Well, you'd been up all night. Mrs. Rudecki just phoned and told me about the siege you were... Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Miss Harry. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Uh... Where are you going? I think I better get some sleep. It's, it's catching up with me. Rather freeze. But... Will you try it on? It's not mink, but it'll keep you warm, that's the main thing. It fits. That's not bad. Turn around, let's see the front. Now, Leonora. Don't do that. I'm sorry. We still have our date tonight. Apologize for boring you out so badly. In the world made you think of that? Was that because of the way I talked about marrying rich? It always makes me see red when people talk that way. My parents made themselves absolutely miserable by having an exaggerated idea about the importance of money. Got a light, sweetie? Sure. By the time A came along, I'd lost most of it. Which is gracious. Your hair looks good that way. Thank you. You look very lovely. Is something worrying you? No, I'm very happy. Go on about your parents. Oh, they, they just wasted their lives pretending to be rich, conniving and finagling. Never working, of course. Thanks, sweetie. Oh, thank you. This isn't mine. What does you want? No, thank you. Which is gracious. I can't imagine you pretending to be rich or, or pretending anything. Well, I did for a while, until I pulled out of it. Two more, sir? No, we're fine, thank you, unless... Oh, no, thank you. Larry, was it very difficult? No. That's because you don't care about money. Well, it's got to care about money to a certain extent. How else could I take you out to dinner when I want to? But I care more about other things, like uh, you know, the kind of work that interests me. Is that why you work in the East Side? Sure. I can learn more there in one day than I can learn anyplace else in a month. All ready, sweetie. Let's go. I beg your pardon. Well, it's perfectly okay. Why it's not just? Why it's not? <laughs> That's a wonderful smile you've got. It's charming. What? Nothing. I was just remembering something. I wish I could remember where I saw you before. I don't think you ever did. Didn't you ever come into town from Long Island? No, hardly ever. What were you doing there? Oh, I was sort of a paid companion to somebody who was very rich. Let's dance. All right. I'm not very good. Well, we don't have to. Oh, I'd like to, if you would. I haven't danced in ages. Perhaps you'd rather not. No, not unless you would. Well, I'd be just as happy sitting here. Oh, so am I. Oh, come on, let's <laughs> dance. Thank you. 
you didn't. <laughs> Good. It was probably somebody else. Well, this public dancing is quite an invention. Get away with murder. <laughs> Wonderful time. <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> we ought to have done this ages ago. Why don't we go out again on Saturday? And then spend Sunday together. And Monday too. Sure. <laughs> Tuesday. Sunday again. You know, it'd be much simpler if we were married. Then we wouldn't have to make dates. Did you hear what I said? Yes. I was proposing. You weren't. Sure, why not? Larry, I... I, I want to, to marry you more than anything in the world, but... But? There's something I have to straighten out first. Let's not talk about it. Okay. I'll propose again tomorrow. What's new? Mm -hmm. Brought in nine pounders this afternoon. Boy. Congratulations. It was a madhouse today. Rat rage. It was this cricket for the boy swallowed a dime. <laughs> no news from Leonora. Well, maybe she isn't feeling well. She'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, I dropped by her place on the way from the hospital. She's moved. Gone. Where to? Long Island, the landlady said. You know, this pipe's on the blink again. We ought to send for the plumber. What's the matter with the landlord? Ah, we'll never catch him. I was out with her last night. Oh, didn't you say anything? About leaving? No. Did you criticize her again? No. I proposed to her, as a matter of fact. I thought I'd run out to Long Island. Uh, Larry, was last night the first time you went out with her? Yes. Long Island. Uh, I don't know. I look pretty silly anyway. All I could get out of her was that she was a paid companion to somebody rich. <laughs> nice work if you can get it. I can just hear the conversation. Good evening, Mr. So-and-so. I'm Dr. Quinata. Are you by any chance keeping one of my former employees, Miss Leonora Ames? Yeah. Yeah. Well, why don't you forget her? You think so? Yeah. Ah. Good night. Good night, Larry. It adds up yes. to be nothing more than a Wendy analysis. I'll tell you. Which, um... which shows absolutely no conception of the problem in plain terms of dollars and cents. It's the paragraph four. This too is completely ridiculous. If you want me to invest one penny, who is that? Dr. Quinada is calling to see a Miss Ames. Who? Miss Ames? I get rid of him, darling. Get rid of yourself. Send him in. Of course, darling. If you want me to invest one penny, you will do it my way or not at all. Sincerely yours. That's all, gentlemen. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr.
in here, please. Good evening. I'm Smith Ulrich. Would you like a drink? Thank you. Is Miss Ames here? She'll be right now. Champagne? I'd rather have something else, if you don't mind. Scotch. That'd be fine. I might have known uh, you'd be good looking. Leonardo was very impressed with you. I was very much impressed with her. She started from scratch and learned to do a good job very quickly. Soda? Plain water, please. Also, she's very attractive. That always helps. Yes, it does. I'm glad you and Leonora are hitting it off so well together. There's nothing like a little extracurricular romance after office hours, is there, Doctor? It's hardly any business of yours, Mr. Ulrich. Just interested in employer-employee relationships. After all, Leonora was an employee of mine. In a way, she still is. How do you mean? We're still married. I always had a curious feeling that I'd seen Leonora before. Now I know where. In the newspapers. A picture. Right after your wedding. I better go. I'm afraid I've made a mistake. I'm afraid you have. You say anything to me. How could you run away like I a child? I tried to tell you. When? Well, the very first day, but I, I, I wanted the job and I. How could you sit at that bar with me and say nothing? I, I just couldn't. Did you know you were going to go back to him? No, not then. What made you do it? I had to. You said you loved me. I do. I. And I what do. is it? Are you afraid of him? No, I. Oh, what? Tell me. I'm going to have a baby. Forget that I love you. Don't no, no, I mean it. Forget that I want you, that I want to marry you, but believe this. You can't stay here. You've got to leave him. I can't. I'm not saying this just because of how I feel. I was with that man for three minutes, but I know he's not normal. He's dangerous. You've got to get out of here. Larry, it's his baby. So because of convention, you'll let him destroy you and your child. No, I won't let him. You'll help. Without meaning to, you'll help. You sat in my office too many times not to know what happens to a child whose parents are messed up. I know what happens to a child whose parents haven't got anything. That's where you came back to him, isn't it? No, I came back for my baby, for his future. I want security. You want money. Isn't that why you married no, him? For no, security? No, I thought I loved him. You mean you made yourself think that? Don't. You felt it was wrong to marry just for money, so you had to make yourself... No. You still got those same ridiculous ideas. Marry rich, live rich. 
I didn't know what to do. You know what you want. Yes, I want you. But you want your child to be rich. Well, make up your mind, Leonora. I'd be the last man to say that anyone can be secure without money in this world. But money alone isn't security, as you ought to know by now. What should I do? Tell me. Grow up. If you're still going to be wishing for mink coats and houses like this, I don't want you. Trying to recapture the feeling of the east side, Leonora? Yes, I we were... I understood you were such a moral character, Doctor. Not the type to make passes at somebody else's wife. Of course, Leonora doesn't surprise me. That's about enough. Now, look. And stop clenching your fists. I'd be only too glad to take a crack at you, but it wouldn't settle a thing. The only one of us who can settle this is Leonora. Smith, Larry... Don't has... try to... I'll tell you exactly what's been going on, Ulrich. I told Leonora that I love her and I want to marry her. Did you bother to tell him about the child? Yes, and I warned her that you'd ruin it. You take a lot for granted. Nothing. I don't even want Leonora until she decides how important money really is to her. Well, I can answer that It's not your answer I'm interested in. It's hers. If you make up your mind, you can always call. Whose child are you having? From the moment I came back, I've had to listen to your filthy insinuations. Well, not anymore. Come down here, Leonora. I said come down here. You came back to get a divorce, didn't you? You wanted to divorce me and live happily ever after with him on my money. I don't want your money. But you do want to leave me, don't you? Yes. We're all wrong together, Smith. It's been a mistake from the beginning. You can have a divorce on one condition. Come down here. You know, Leonora, you still walk like a model. And not a very good one at that. Are you in love with your doctor friend? You are, aren't you? What does... Admit it. Do you care whether I am or not? Yes, I want you to be in love with him. Why? Because then it's easier for me to win. Win what? What is it you want, Smith? You can have your divorce, but I get the child. That's the condition. You know I wouldn't do that. Of course I do. I also know I can get custody of the child any time I want. How? By suing you for divorce and naming Quinata correspondent. But we haven't done anything wrong. You have money, you can always get enough people to swear to anything you want. You wouldn't. Oh, yes, I would. And what's more, I will. If you ever so much as talk to him on the phone. You once told me you thought I was sorry from the moment we married. That's pretty mild. I hated myself for being such a fool. I never wanted you in the first place. The more you fought me, the more I began to dislike you. I think now I hate you. All I care about is breaking you, and if I have to use the child to do it, I will. You know enough about me to know that I can't stand losing. Only nice people lose, and you're obviously a nice girl. All you came back for is that child, and as long as you want it, you're stuck here. And that's probably for the rest of your life. Smith. Smith, wait. Wait, Smith. Smith! Oh, Smith, you don't mean it. You're just angry with me. Smith, listen, please. Let me have my baby. Don't take my baby, Smith. Go. Oh, Smith! Oh, Smith! <laughs>
from the way that multimillionaire has been treating his Kahab wife the last three months, we understand she is ready to call their Long Island estate wit's end. Ha ha. I can't even get her on the phone. Tell Leonora I want to see her. Right now. Yes, I know, darling, but but he wants you to come downstairs. No, no, no. Just just for a few minutes. No, I won't. You know, please, he's terribly furious. I've I've never seen him so upset in my life. The doctor told him I mustn't. The doctor told him I mustn't go out of the house. I must get some sleep. Darling, he I... knows that. The doctor told him he mustn't call me and wake me and take me out of the house at all hours. Just this last time. No, I can't. Please. No, no, I won't. I won't. Coming down? She's very sick. I feel sorry for her. I, I think it's a mistake. A woman in her condition to treat her like... Is she coming down? Why the devil do you think I sent you up there, you dirty little parasite? Get her down here. I think I'd prefer to be a hat waiter again, Mr. Ulrich. You know, you're a big man, but not big enough to destroy that girl. Goodbye. Dirty little snake. Big enough to. She doesn't come down.
Get me some water. Get me some water. Yeah. Wait. Wait. Get me some water. Leonora. Leonora. I need some. What? What? Blood pressure 110 over 70. EKG normal. He lived. Discontinued the oxygen. Take your child away, and maybe you succeeded. The child will die. It's a terrible thing, I know, but but you'll be free to start living. Isn't that true? He can't hold you anymore. He won't even want to. All he wanted was to dominate you and kick you around like everybody else. All he cared about the child was to to use it to keep you under his thumb. Now you'll be free, free to start living, free to be happy, to do all the things that are worthwhile. But you can be happy, darling. That's why I want you to hear me. I hear you, Larry. Larry? 
she's okay. Her premature birth, the baby died. Oh, sure. <laughs> I'll give you two minutes. Where are you taking that? In here? Oh, no, she can't be disturbed. <laughs> A check room doesn't want to be responsible for the darn cold doctor. Well, don't worry about it. If my diagnosis is correct, she won't want that anyway. All right. 